uh, yeah, today's going to be a really exciting day. Um, Sean, yeah. hello. <laughs> Sean Fury and uh, my friendship goes back um, over 10 years now. It's crazy how time flies. We actually met at a conference called the Hero Roundtable. And uh, we both work in, in heroism. Uh, uh, Sean, he can explain a little bit about his background. He um, has been doing hero work for a very long time. Uh, I got into it because I have a program called School Heroes Unite, um, in which we kind of tackle the bullying situation from a heroic standpoint. That's why I think Sean and I got along so well right out the get-go. But um, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to waste any more of your time listening to me. We have a very, very special guest He's got a lot of expertise in the areas of heroism, and he's going to help all of us to let out our inner hero and be the hero uh, that we've been looking for. So, uh, Sean, I'll pass it to you. I'm just going to make you a co-host. All Get right. Here. That way you can share your screen and do all that kind of fun stuff. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and spotlight your video um, just so that everyone sees you nice and big so we don't miss anything you have to say. And uh, my friends, thank you again so much for joining us today. It's going to be a really exciting class. So take it away, Sean. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. And thank you so much, Scott, for having me. I am super pumped to be here. Um, I love heroism. And uh, I also have a 10-year-old daughter. So I definitely can relate to uh, the importance of heroism for you guys. Um, because I've seen her learn how to be a hero in her own day-to-day -day life, and it's just been really great. So I think that you're going to like it as well. I um, have a little slideshow that I made for you, and it's got some pictures and stuff. So I'm going to show it to you while we're talking, you guys. And you'll still be able to see me and everybody else on the side. But I think it's kind of fun to be able to see the pictures. So... Uh, what I call it is a hero training for kids, right? Kids can be heroes too. Uh, everybody thinks that heroes are just kind of made up on the movies and stuff. But the truth is that the reason that we watch movies about heroes is because we can all be one, right? And uh, um, whoops, I just got to be able to slide show forward. There we go. So hopefully by talking about um, heroes a little bit, it'll help us to become, you know, a hero in our day-to-day -day life, right? We're not going to wear tights like Superman, maybe, or a cape, <laughs> uh, but we can learn how to make a difference like Superman did and Batman and, you know, Harry Potter and Hermione and Wonder Woman and Moana and all the people that we like, you know, even on the shows, my daughter likes to watch My Little Pony and there's all kinds of stuff in there about being a hero every day, right? So I'm not talking about being super fancy. You're not going to be leaping from a building or, you know, going into a burning building or anything, but there's ways that you can be a hero every day that are really um, great and not too hard to do, right? Things that you can do. So hopefully by doing this training, we'll get an idea of how to do that. The first thing I always want people to realize is that if you look around in life, you know, things are always kind of happening randomly, but you can make things happen in a certain way. Just like with dominoes, if you've ever set dominoes up, you can knock them over and they, they all go one into the next one into the next one. And what's cool about that is that uh, you are able to do that on purpose, right? If you wanted, right? Things don't just have to happen, right? You could just have a regular day-to-day -day experience or you can make something happen on, on, on purpose. Like maybe you've ever had a birthday party and you picked what kind of cake you wanted and you wanted a certain theme to be on the frosting. And so that was you getting involved and using what I call your not so secret superpower, which is just to influence things, right? Everybody has the ability to get involved and say what they want or what they need and to make a difference, not just once in a while, but actually all the time, every single day. And the only big difference between being a regular person like Clark Kent um, and being a superhero like Superman is just doing it on purpose, right? Getting an idea of what you want to have happen and doing it on purpose. So how did you get this power, right? Well, you were born with it. All human beings and even some animals have it, right? Um, you were born with the imagination, 
that you can think of what you'd like to have happen. And then you can come up with a plan with your thinking, you know, about it and talking with your parents. And then you can choose with your free will and then act on it with your arms and legs and your hands and feet and make it happen. So maybe you, you imagined what kind of birthday party you wanted. And then you thought of a plan in your mind. And then you made a decision with your will, your free will, and said, you know what? I don't want to do the same birthday that everybody else does. I want to do one that I want to do. And so you told your parents about it, and maybe they helped you to create that. And then it happened, and it was really great, right? So that's part of being heroic. The only difference really between doing that and like what Superman and Wonder Woman do and Batman is that the heroic stuff, it can be a little bit, it can make you nervous. It could be a little bit scary. Um, and sometimes it might cost you money or time, right? So there's like some risk involved. Um, it, like if you ever tried to like um, help somebody that it might make you, you know, a little nervous to stick up for them or something. If someone was being treated poorly in class and you said, hey, I don't really like that, you guys. You think you should stop. That might make you nervous. But um, those are things that you can do, right? The birthday party example, sticking up in class. If you see somebody alone, you know, uh, coloring a picture and you think they're lonely, you could go sit and color one with them and make them feel included. And so in this way, it's kind of like you're like a painter and you can use your decisions every day to create the kind of life that you want, right? And, and actually, um, isn't that something that your daughter did as well? She saw another classmate that was uh, coloring alone or something and she wanted yes, to Yes, yes. So My daughter, Sophia, she goes to childcare. And uh, she saw a girl sitting at the table and she thought, I think that girl is probably feeling lonely because no one was talking to her. And so she went over and sat with her and colored a picture. And just like that, uh, that girl felt included. And so the big word for that is community, right? Heroes are always making people feel included and they love to have community because they're just more stronger the more people are in their community. So that's kind of neat. Um, here's an example of how it's kind of natural to be a hero. Even raccoons do it. In this case, there's a mom and a dad raccoon holding each other. I think the one in the back is holding the one in the middle's legs. And the one in the middle is picking up the baby raccoon and pulling it over a wall so that it didn't get hit by a car on the road because there's lots of cars going by. And this picture was taken by someone that was driving by in a car. Um, and it was, I think it was a video originally. It might still be on Google somewhere. But I thought, wow, even, even animals take risks to get involved. And they're putting themselves in a position where they could fall and hurt their, you know, bang their head on the ground. That's a sacrifice for sure. So they're taking a risk. They're getting involved. And they're helping someone for a good cause. And that's their child, right? It's their baby. That's, that's the good reason. It's their life. They don't want anything bad to happen in their life. So the other thing is this one, you might have seen the um, cartoon Pinocchio. That's what made me think of the puppet on a string. Why should you use this power to influence things? Well, because guess what? Like I said, everybody was born with this power, but not everybody is using it in a good way. And if you're not using it in a good way or, and you're not you know, noticing it, then someone else might try to do it for you. <laughs> I always like to think, as a grown-up, I'm always driving my car on the highway, and sometimes I see a car pulled over for speeding, and I know that the police officer gave them a ticket in order to get them to stop driving fast, right? So that the policeman, he knows that he has power to influence people, and he's using that power to try to get them to drive safely. But uh, some people might not be aware of that, and so I'm hoping that we'll all be aware of our power, not just the, someone like the policeman or the teacher. Um, so this one is kind of hard to see with a little screen in front of it, but it says that if you have this power to influence things and you start using it, that makes you a change agent. That's a big word. It's another word for hero. Um, if you ever wanted to know what that means, just look at your laundry room or at the laundry mat. A washer machine changes things from wet to dry and a dryer changes things from wet uh, excuse me, a dryer changes things from wet to dry, right? A washer machine changes things from dry to wet. So a washer and dryer, those are change agents. And that's what heroes are. 
But like I said in the last um, video, I, the last slide I showed you, even villains are change agents, right? So, and there's other types of characters in the movies that you see, right? Heroes and villains and minions and sidekicks and bystanders. Bystanders are people that are kind of not getting involved. So they're not really even acting like a change agent. Um, it looks like Sims has a question. You just got to unmute Sims. Yep, Ben. I have a question. Um, yeah. Are minions like um, the sidekicks of villains? Great question. Are, are minions like the sidekicks of villains? And you know what? I would say, I would say yes to that. That's the only thing I yeah. noticed. That, go ahead. Also, the minions are only only being told by their boss to do it. Exactly. They're not using their will to do it. So That's, basically, they're not villains. Yes, you are so right. I am so glad you said that. Yeah. High five. You get the digital, like digital high five award. <laughs> um, under too much pressure. They are. And that that is what's wrong in that situation. You're exactly right. Minions are just like everybody else. And even like the villain, we're all on a journey to discover our inner hero self. I, like I said, we're all born with this ability to be a good person and to make a good effect on the world. And everybody's in a different spot in their journey. And the minion, I think, describes when um, someone's behaving in a way where they don't really want to do a bad thing, but they're scared of saying no. And so they don't want to get punished or hurt. And that is exactly like the minions in that movie, Minions. But I think it's like the one in number three where the lady is the villain. Um, in the first couple of minions, they don't really show a great example of what that minion is. But in the third one, they show a good example of what Ben just said, that they're only doing it because they're being made to, because they're afraid of what's going to happen. So whereas a sidekick is not afraid. They, they know that everything's OK and like they want to help. Like Robin the Batman? Yes, like Robin, uh, Robin for Batman as a sidekick. Exactly. Also, if you've seen Harry Potter, um, uh, has anybody seen Harry Potter? Yeah. <laughs> that one, yeah. Remember, uh, what was the guy's name? Ron Weasley. He was one of the friends of Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the difference between Ron and Harry Potter at the beginning, right? Well, if you remember that scene with the troll in the bathroom, where someone says there's a troll in the bathroom at Hogwarts. So yeah, what he is... managed to somehow defeat. That's right. So Harry goes to solve the problem, but Ron is just standing there going, what should we do, Harry? And so he was being a sidekick in the moment. In the moment. He wanted to help, but he didn't believe that he could just go do it. And so he looked to Harry to do that. And so, but towards the end of the series of the movies, Ron becomes more heroic and pretty soon, he doesn't wait around for someone else to lead the way. He leads the way, right? He takes initiative. Great. Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're great. Great, great point. So that's where I was going with this is what, what's the point of being a hero in everyday life, right? Well, it's just like I said with the birthday party and my daughter at childcare helping someone to have a better day. Uh, I think of heroes as kind of like mechanics. You know, a mechanic... You ever taken your car to the garage and somebody comes out and works on the tires or the engine? Maybe they fill up the tires with air or they put some oil in it or they make something that's broken, taken off, and then they put something new in that makes it better. So a big word that grownups use for that is automotive mechanic, right? And so in a way, heroes are like a situation mechanic because heroes are good at getting involved in a way that makes things better. Um, whereas, like you said before, if someone is acting like that minion role, they might want to make it better, but they're not going to be able to because they're not doing things unless someone makes them, right? Like, and it's not usually for a good reason or a good outcome. Um, so that's kind of a clue, right? The reason that Harry Potter knew that he had to go to the bathroom was because he knew it wasn't okay for a troll to be in the bathroom. So I use this picture to show on one side of the road is like, the earth is like dying and on the other side, it's very healthy. And so the hero is really good at noticing when things are not that great or when they are. And uh, that's why they get involved because we human beings, 
just like cats and dogs and plants, we, we need to be in a healthy environment. We need to be in a good situation. So we have to take care of it. And uh, there's some examples that you already talked about, um, but I have a few more to show you some examples of the movies of the heroes that you already know about. Um, and here they are. There's one we just mentioned, Harry Potter and Hermione and Ron. Now there's a clue that I put at the bottom of the page here. I said, stability, it's a basic human emotional health need. That's a big grown up way of saying, you know, you ever, somebody ever hurt your feelings because they said something rude to you, or maybe you saw something sad happen and it made you feel emotional. Well, human beings, just like plants, we need to be in certain situations that are good for us. Just like plants need to have sunlight and water. Uh, we need to have good experiences, right? And other people can ruin that for us. So one of the things that I think Harry Potter and Hermione and Ron do is they make everybody feel like things are going to happen every day. So Voldemort is trying to wreck Hogwarts, right? So that they can't stay open. So he's always interfering and causing things to be ruined. But Harry Potter and Hermione and Ron, they make it so that everything is consistent. It's stable. It happens over and over again. School. Every day we can go to school because it's a good thing. Um, whereas Voldemort's trying to make it uh, wrecked. So that's kind of what those heroes are doing in that movie. And the reason it's cool is because we all want to feel like things are predictable, right? You don't want just someone to be kind to you on Tuesday, but then on Wednesday, they're mean. You want them to be kind on every day. And that's what Ron and Harry and uh, Hermione show us. Another great example is Wonder Woman. You guys ever seen Wonder Woman? Yeah. She's pretty cool. Uh, what, is she, what is she really doing? Like if she was a gardener and she was trying to make this social garden better for humans that are living there, what is it that she's making it sure is there? Well, I put it at the top here, peace. Remember that movie Wonder Woman is all about Ares, the god of war. He's trying to make everybody have death and destruction and fighting. And so she battles Ares in order to restore peace because she knows that in order for people to be well in life and feel good about life, they need to feel peace. Another one I like is, you might recognize her. Anybody know who that is? Katniss Everdeen from Hunger Games. That one it came out a little while ago. But in that series of movies, the people in the towns are very hopeless and despairing. They hate their lives. They're not happy. But by watching her on the Hunger Games, she gives them hope. It gives them something to look forward to. And you can do that, too, with your brothers and sisters, your friends, your family just by reminding them that there's good things in life that are going to be coming up. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, like, I always do that with people that I hang out with. Um, I try to remind them of what's the good thing that you have coming up this weekend or next week that you can look forward to. Why should you keep going instead of giving up, right? And you can do that every day. That's the easy way to be a hero. Anybody know who that is? Famous? Yeah. Martin Luther King Jr.? You got it. Nice. One of my favorite real life heroes, right? And I say that. Oh, because yeah. He was during the Civil War, right? He was during uh, the Civil Rights Movement um, back in the 50s when African Americans in the South uh, were slaves. Well, sort they were of like, it's sort yeah. of like the Minions and stuff. They were there. That was a little bit before the Civil Rights Movement, but you're right. They wanted to have equality of value with everybody else that lived in America. And they wanted to be able to eat at the same restaurant, uh, go to the same you know, soccer game with their family and not have anybody be mean to them just because the skin color of their body looked different than someone else in town. So what did he do? Just like all the other heroes I mentioned, he decided to get involved in a way that was good for himself and the community. In he didn't hurt anybody. Go ahead. It was an incredible way. Yes. And uh, so then by doing that, guess what he made everyone feel like after it was all said and done? Equally valued. And there was laws passed to make sure that people were treated as if everyone was important and not just some people. So I really like that one. Um, this one is from when I was a kid. I don't know if you guys recognize this person. This is the original 
Superman. Nice. So it's been a while since you might have seen Superman in a movie. But uh, he represents uh, safety to me because Superman is always making the situation safe from danger. In this example, there was a helicopter that was crashing, and he went and grabbed it and saved the lady there that ended up becoming his girlfriend, Lois Lane. Um, so that's another reason you might get involved, right? So, so far we've said a reason you might get involved is equality, safety, hope, stability, um, and peace. Now, there's another thing, though, to remember, uh, and that is it's not just all a free-for-all, right, using this influence. Like Ben was suggesting, there's a difference between heroes and villains and minions and sidekicks, and that is how they use their influence and when they use their influence. So you want to make sure, like Spider-Man, uh, remember this, the movie Spider-Man, uh, I think it was Peter Parker's grandfather. Do you remember what he said before he died? Um, I forget what he said since I didn't really watch the movie. Responsibility? Yes. Scott? Well, I was going to, yeah, just say the same thing. With, with great power comes great responsibility. With yeah. great yeah. power. I was going with great power comes great electricity. <laughs> That's true, too. So if you're, did you want to say something else, Ben? Oh, he wanted to say that he thought, he's, he was going to say that, but he saw that, so then he thought it was something else. Oh, nice. So if you're going to use your influence, that means you're going to be taking ownership for how you use it. So if you go around making poor choices, then you're going to end up probably grounded or in trouble or something, right? Losing privileges. So that's because it's so important that you learn to use your power in a way that's good. Go ahead. Now that somebody raised their hand. Awesome. Also, I just realized villains are just heroes that misuse their own um ability uh they don't know that they're the villains they everyone has a different agenda absolutely absolutely not, uh, it's not this it's not the same for everyone look at povs also some villains cause problems on purpose while others are just hurt and they're trying to make things better by making it's, it fair absolutely uh, I call that the misguided hero. They're, they're trying to make things better, but they don't realize that what they're doing might not be the right thing in that moment. Now, to answer that other point that somebody said, um, the different agenda, right? Everybody has different values. We all have things that are different, things that are important to us. Like maybe I really like to watch hero movies and learn about them, but other people might like to play basketball. And so they're going to be really good at basketball and I'm not. And that's okay. But one of the things that we all have in common as humans is that we all want to have good experiences in life. And so just like Mission Impossible says, it's your mission if you choose to accept it to try to create situations that are good for you as a human being, right? And if you want to know what's good in general for other people, look at what's good for human beings. You know, we all want to feel safe, hope. We all want to have stability. We all want to have peace. And if you don't, that's totally cool too. But as far as I can tell, that's the things that a lot of people like. And there's other things, too, like care, appreciation. Everybody wants to feel appreciated. Um, you know who is uh, my hero representative for appreciation? Santa no Claus. Idea. Santa oh, Claus. Yeah. Do you know why that is? I think it's because he gives people presents and appreciates. Yeah, yeah. he was um, being attacked by somebody and uh, he wa was being nice. He wasn't getting mad and doing something mean. Exactly. And trying to get his revenge. Or pay back. Exactly. All right, let's keep on trucking. So what can you do when people use their power for good and they are, they're doing it on purpose, like you said, for a good thing, to have a good effect, and you can tell that it really is having a good effect. It's not just they're, you know, hoping it'll be good, but they really, you can really tell. Well, just like we were doing earlier, high five it. You know, you don't have to give them an actual high five. Maybe you don't feel comfortable to be too close to people, you know, currently or whatever, because you don't want to catch a cold or something, but um, or maybe you're not allowed to be too close, but you can still give them another type of high five. You can say, hey, nice job um, sitting next to that girl and making her feel included. That really was nice. And I liked that. It makes me happy to see people doing good things. And I appreciate you for doing that. 
You know what I mean? Those are appreciation. Yes. Yep. So we want to, if the, remember I said those things that Harry Potter and Wonder Woman are doing, well, we can help make that happen for other people and for ourselves by being those things. Like Ben said, and like Santa, um, when someone picks a fight with me, I don't have to fight back with them. I can just tell them with my words that I don't really like what happened, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to flip out. <laughs> um, so I don't know how we're doing on time, Scott, but I'll just go, these things we'll go through. And if anybody has any questions, we can. So yeah, guys, no, we're, we're still good. And honestly, if we go a little bit over, that's fine. I think everyone's okay. really, really enjoying all this great information. So you just keep doing your thing. Okay, cool. So here's the question, guys. How does someone go from being an ordinary person to being a heroic person, right? And remember I said that heroes don't always look like heroes. They just look like regular people. Like Wonder Woman, when Wonder Woman is not wearing her outfit, she just looks like a regular person at the antique store. Go ahead, Ben. Just got to unmute. And also, Mar and also Martin King Luke, and also whatever his name, Martin Luther King Jr., Yep. He doesn't look like a superhero. He doesn't have any powers or anything, I, but he uses power for good. I exactly. I, know, I think I know how they become a hero. Yeah. Say that again, Ben. I, to me, they yeah, a little louder. Okay. Um, I think they become heroes when they realize uh, when something happens to them. Like Terry Fox, he got something. He got cancer, but then he saw things, the same thing happening to other people. Yes. So then he decided to start a one, and he looks like everybody else. Well, not Willie. Yeah. Then, will he look like everybody else, but still, he looks like a normal civilian. Absolutely. And that's because just it. That's that's it. Because and guess he, what? And he did it for COVID research. Gotcha. Oh, you meant cancer research. Yeah. So you know who else is like that? Batman, right? Batman lost his parents at a young age. They died, right? Because somebody he's an orphan. So then he, he was an orphan, yeah. So, when so he then he tries to prevent other things from happening. Exactly. You guys know where I'm going with this. So Batman takes personal responsibility for protecting the people of Gotham City because he doesn't want anyone else to go through the thing that he went through, right? Go ahead, Ben. I'm Max and also um oh. um I'm Max and also um uh, what uh, how come it's named Gotham City? I'm Sam. Ooh, that one I don't know. I'll have to look that up and get back to you on that John, one. Um, ben has two brothers, Max and Sam. So there's oh. three of them at one household. So it could gotcha. be a little bit confusing. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but you, Great you, question. You take it away, Sean. <laughs> yeah, and um, I can't see everybody on the camera in all the different houses. So uh, if you guys have a question, just uh, unmute in case I don't see your hand. So the picture I have here is of a guy looking like he's a fun tourist going swimming or something, but he doesn't realize there's a big shark behind him. Well, obviously, this is not a real picture, guys, so you don't have to have any nightmares tonight. This is just what they call Photoshop, that somebody put a picture behind him. But the reason they did that is to tell you that it's important to pay attention to what's going on in your life around you, right? Just like I mentioned my daughter, she first had to look around the room before she could realize there was a girl that was lonely at the table coloring by herself. And they call that situational awareness, having an awareness of your situation. Go ahead. I just got to unmute. Um, the shark isn't actually going to kill you. Uh, sharks are pretty chill, actually. They just think that you are a, are a fool or a seal. Cause exactly. Like and also, the thing is this. More shark deaths happen each year than humans getting killed by sharks. This wow. needs to stop. Yeah, five, and they only die because they want their fin. Um, <laughs> oh, that's sad. Only um, five humans are killed a year by a shark, and 600 million different species of sharks are killed every year. Wow. Look at and, that. No, that's, there's some good stuff on there about sharks. That's really cool that you guys know that. I watched a, sh a show about how uh, some people that are experts at han handling uh, shark relationships, they can like pet them on the nose and stuff and not get bitten. That's pretty neat. But I wouldn't try it without your mom and dad's permission. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's, so I mentioned, you know, somebody said uh, 
Max, I think, said or um, said about uh, actually, I think it might have been Ben that said uh, about um, somebody, you know, Batman was an orphan and now he protects Gotham City. So notice how something bad happened, just like the guy with the cancer story that started the run that uh, Batman hey, turned he turned his pain. Yeah, Terry Fox, he turned his pain into purpose, into a focus that he could work on. Right. And he's dedicated to that. So uh, you might not be familiar with all these characters, but this is a guy named Dr. Manhattan. He's an old Oh, yeah, school. I see him. He's, yeah. And he he's can see. Inside what? What's he inside again? I don't know, but it's the show where the they were going to, um, where that Egyptian guy was going to kill destroy half of the people in the world. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, Adrian was going to kill all the people in the world to try to keep peace. He he was kind of like you said earlier, a misguided person. He he thought he was going to have a good Ace's effect. His definition can vary between people. Exactly. Ben Sims, uh, 2021. Yeah, so what I want you to know about him just as a way of remembering since we kind of are building this map for the territory of being heroic every day in a safe way. Um he has the ability to see the future. And so if you want to have a better life or a better day, right? You have to imagine. Plan what it's ahead. Gonna... Yes, exactly. And he's good at that. Uh, so then what's the next step? And by the way, guys, these all come, if your parents ever look it up on Google, this, these ideas, this last few slides come from uh, Joseph Campbell's idea of the hero's journey. And you'll notice that a lot of people that write movies, they use the same uh, 12 stages to make their point. And you're going to see a lot of pictures from movies here. And the reason they all work is because they're all about the same subject. And most people don't realize that, whether it's Wonder Woman or The Matrix or The NeverEnding Story or Moana, they all have things in common. So once you have that vision for the future, now you're going to make a decision to try to implement it, right? Um, go ahead, Ben. Maybe except the bottom picture. It's not a picture. It's more of a chip. Exactly. I, and I'm super glad that it works because it's so cool. <laughs> uh, the next step, right, in creating your positive change is you want to connect with like-minded others, right? Because maybe you, you don't want to be the only hero in the room, right? It's more fun to hang out with other people that are like you. That's one thing I like about talking to Scott is that he understands these things that I like to understand, too. <laughs> so I call that a community. I call it a community of empowered individuals, aka the power team. <laughs> but you could also call it a hero support network. Some people call it the Justice League or the Avengers or the X-Men, right? Go ahead, Ben. You were gonna say something. I just re I just realized all of these are from movies again. Yes. Uh, yep. I'm a big fan. Wizard of Oz team or something. Whatever yep. that, that one is. I think Mission Impossible. I don't know. And then last <laughs> but not least, I have no idea what the hell the bottom one is. I think oh, that, yeah. On the top left is Wizard of Oz. On the top right is from the Matrix. The bottom left is the uh, Justice League. And on the bottom right is Wonder Woman. And that's her team of helpers. I see. So they, yep. And then the, what's the next one? You guys might not have seen The Matrix because that one was kind of an older film, but there's a lot of episodes where Neo learns new skills. Go ahead, guys. I'm pretty sure it's not an episode. I'm pretty sure it's a movie. Yeah, yeah that's yes, that's what I meant. There's a scene in the movie. That's what I meant to say. He uh, fights him, and then inside the new Matrix, he's going to fight him again. I, yeah, I'm, look, awesome. yeah, I'm looking new forward to that. The Matrix is coming somewhere in 2021 or 2022. Matrix 4. Woo -woo. <laughs> That'll be exciting. All right, guys, let's see. We're almost there. So now the whole point of like being a hero in your day-to-day -day life, right? We said it's to improve situations and then to protect them so that they keep on being good and according to what your values are. And hopefully, you know, you want to kind of couch that or connect it to what's good for you as a human being, right? Because I might want to eat a thousand... Uh, Snickers bars, but that might not be good for me as a human being. So, I'm pretty sure everyone would want to, but yeah, that's too much candy. You'll probably right. get diabetes. So, we don't want to just do whatever we want. We want to connect it to what's good for us as a human because too much of anything might be bad for us, right? 
Um, it looks like somebody else raised their hand, Ethan and Ivana. Just got to unmute, guys. There you go. I, what happens if there's a hero who thinks that someone's a bad guy, then they do something bad to them that makes them become a bad guy? Oh, wow. That's a great point. Mm. You know, uh, there's a good movie, I think. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but um, the movie Maleficent, I think Disney brought that. Um, D Maleficent started out as an innocent child. I think she was a fairy or something like that. And then she grew up and fell in love with a human guy and he was going to be the king, but he ended up um, tricking her and cutting off her wings and it made her feel really betrayed and sad. And um, then she changed. She wasn't a happy uh, person that was using her power in a way that helped the world anymore. She changed into a villain, right? And so she was that person that turned, her character turned from heroic to kind of like villainous. But guess what? It was interesting. And you, you notice when she does the villainy thing, she kind of like puts a curse on the king's daughter. And that's how Sleeping Beauty um, got her story. But because um, she cursed the king's daughter to be asleep until she was 16 or no, to fall asleep when she turned 16. But then eventually she becomes a friend of the king's daughter of Sleeping Beauty. And she, guess what? Guess what the cure is for that? So I'll, I mentioned that she was betrayed and that made her sad. But then her sadness and her pain, she never had a way to get it out of her system. She didn't get to go to a counselor or like a mental health therapist mm -hmm. or talk to her yeah. close family or friends or uh, someone in her religious or faith community um, that she trusted. And so that pain, that emotional pain from not getting those needs met of safety and peace, right? She didn't feel hope for the future anymore. Um, that made it, it turned into bitterness. And like my daughter says, that the moral of the story of Maleficent is that if you, if someone hurts you and you don't find a way to get that painful energy out and to find a way back to your true self, that can turn you into someone that's got a lot of madness inside and i think that in i work by day when i'm not doing hero stuff i work as a drug and alcohol counselor with people that are trying to not drink beer anymore or maybe they're trying to not do drugs and stuff and uh one of the things that they talk about in that job is to let go of your resentments so if if you're feeling upset towards someone it's you know, I think you might have heard other people say that too. Like, I think the Dalai Lama says that, that uh, holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other guy I'm to pretty die. sure Carrie Fisher said that. Carrie Fisher, yeah. Okay, cool. Perfect. Exactly. Hey, that's is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Exactly. So we don't want to hold on to, obviously, if we have something happen to us, like, Batman saw some bad things happen when he was a kid and his pa family was not alive anymore. That's very painful and tragic. And we don't want to just let go of that lightly, of course. But if we don't, you know, find a way to get help with that, then it might change who we are on the inside or how we do things. Now, bear in if mind could, that... If I, if I could just yeah. uh, make, make one point here, Sean, is yep. just that sometimes, like in this case, addressing the problem can actually be your... Um, like, you know how other superheroes, their thing was bringing peace or hope or equality. Um, addressing the problems is actually kind of your way of being a hero in your everyday work. Because, you know, I, I like to say um, bad things happen to everybody, to good, to good people as well. And even though it might not be your fault, it is on you. It is your responsibility to deal with it. And yes. so you're helping people to address their problems so that then they can become uh, the hero that is inside of them. So sometimes even addressing a problem could be another one of those categories you mentioned, because that's kind of what you do for a living. You help people to address their problems so they can then overcome them. So I just want exactly. to credit because you're a, an everyday hero for sure. Thank you. And just like I think it was somebody, uh, maybe Max, that said about the cancer example. So if somebody hurts me, and this actually did happen to me growing up, I, I saw somebody getting hurt in my family and nobody came to help us. And so now as a grown up, my way of being like Batman is just what Scott said. When I see things that are a problem, I try to help people, but I want to do it in a way that's appropriate, right? Because it's not my job to help people if it's not my situation. All I can do is encourage them 
and hope that they choose to uh, find a way, like Scott said, to make their situation better. And guess what? The good news, just to wrap up that point before I go to your questions, is Maleficent did find a way back to her true self and she became heroic again, right? And by the end of the movie, and, and you notice that her environment got like colorful and happy at the end. And that was really cool. She had love in her heart. And I, my word for love is lots of vibrant energy. And I, I think heroes I have like that. It. <laughs> um, go ahead, uh, Ben. Um, um, one of my dreams when I was a kid is that hurt people, hurt people. And that is technically true. Yes, that is absolutely the case. Hurting people hurt people. Yep, that's so true. Great point. So, guys, um, if you're going to address one of these problems, like Scott said, it's going to be important that you try to focus on the solution and and realize you want to have a good effect on people, right? You don't want to just upset everybody and make them hate you. And you don't want to make them feel hurt, like uh, Ivana said. If you don't want them to become something else because of your, you know, choice to deal with them a certain way. So be thinking about what kind of outcome you want. That's what I do. I like to think like, if I want to have a peaceful day, then I need to act peaceful. If I want to have a safe day, then I need to act safe. And um, that, that way I can have the outcome that I want. Even if other people try to push me or tempt me to do something else. Um, and like, you know, anybody that's ever tried to make a change, it might be hard. You might feel like you can't do it. You might think it's not going to work out, but I like to say that's an illusion. It's just a mirage. It's not really there. It's fake. There always is a way to the goal. Um, just like in the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, in order to get to the Holy Grail, he has to step onto an invisible bridge. He couldn't see it, but he had to take a leap of faith. And you might have to do that too. Don't step on an invisible bridge, but take a leap <laughs> of faith. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is when you, when you talk, when you try to create a change by confronting a problem that's in your situation, like at school or church or home or for parents at work, uh, sometimes it, it can cause people to realize that you're using your influence in a way that they don't want you to, right? They liked it when you were just being quiet and not getting involved. And so now they might get mad at you and they might try to retaliate against you by, they might say mean things to you. They might try to get you to go back to the way you were before, before you started getting involved. And so you just have to accept that that problem that you might have knocked down, so to speak, it's not knocked out and it's coming back to get you. And that's part of the process of creating a change, right? This is from the scene in Moana, if you remember that. Go ahead. Uh, is that Sam? Go ahead. No, this is Ben. And also, oh, Ben. Sorry. <laughs> the last slide... I'd use the power of yet. Oh, yet okay. is a strong thing. I can't do it yet. I like that. Nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start teaching that to people. Thank. You. Is that okay if I do that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, I'll give you credit. All right, guys. So if somebody, if you're trying to make a change and someone doesn't like it. That's just normal. Don't don't make don't let it make you think you have to stop. Um, you do want to stop if somebody is crying and saying stop. But if people just don't like you doing something that's actually good and it, and it's safe and peaceful and kind, then it might be like in Wonder Woman. In Wonder Woman, when she was fighting the Nazis, I think, and they didn't want her to keep going, so they started shooting at her, and she just put up her shield and she just buckled down and kept on going. And so she was showing us that she can stay empowered even when people want her to stop. And so this is what I call protecting the change that you're trying to make. Or you could call it your protect my investment skills. You've invested a lot of time and money and energy into whatever change, or you know, you've spent time on it and someone's coming along and trying to make you give up halfway through. That wouldn't work out, right? Because you want to see it through to the end. And uh, that's my last slide, I think, is... Uh, even though you might expect somebody to try to stop you or something, like maybe you even think thoughts like I can't do it or I should just give up or nobody likes me. Like take me, for example. I've been working on this hero stuff now for 10 years and I came up with all kinds of different ways to talk about it. And a lot of people didn't like me for that. They thought I was being cocky or arrogant and maybe uh, acting like rude or something because I was saying that there was like a way of living that was good and stuff. And 
I had to keep going, even though that was difficult. And now I get to be here and share it with you. And that makes me feel so awesome. Go ahead. But don't let your guard down. Even when things might seem over, they might not. Exactly. So we have to learn to be okay with uh, that, you know, have being in our participant mode, having a good time, but also being ready to be a to put on our superhero outfit. And if we have to, like Superman, you know, when he pulls his shirt open. Uh, so guys, I wrote on the slide here that by solving problems and by creating these positive changes, things will get better and you will become more powerful. Because just like in Super Mario Brothers, which was a video game when I was a kid, every time, yes, every time that you jump over one of those little like characters, you know, the little guys, Every time you make it through one of those obstacles, you level up, right? That's what I wanted to show by the spiral. And you get to a better life situation. But you know what? It also gets harder, right? But here's the good news. Even though the levels get harder, you get better at it. And so you're more able to deal with it. Go ahead, guys. Also, technically, if you think about it, Mario is a bad guy. He stomped on random mushrooms <laughs> and <laughs> turtles and <laughs> also and also. And also, I'm pretty sure Bowser put a curse and made every single brick block in the Mushroom Kingdom a, to a toad. So then he transformed toads into a mushroom, into those blocks that you hit with your head. So every single block you hit equals one toad death. Oh, my God. Well, I am so excited that you guys know what I'm talking about. Go ahead, bud. You just got to unmute again. Uh, uh, also, there's power-ups. Yes. The fire, the superstar, or uh, the big mushroom. Yep. The and you know, you know what? You're so right. And for me, you know what that is? I call them heroic skills and heroic habits. And by learning different skills, like how to say no to someone instead of like, if I don't like what's happening, can I say no? You know how I practice that? When I go to McDonald's and they ask me if I want to get a large soda, I say, no, I want a small soda. <laughs> and that way I learned to say no to people. And uh, it's it, like Snickers bars. Exactly. <laughs> I might tell myself that I want to eat 100 Snickers bars, but I have to say no to myself. And so, you know, a lot of people don't like um, the idea of powerfulness because they think about, you know, the bad guys in history that have done bad things with power. But that's the thing about being heroic is that it's you're you're not going to just do whatever you want because that's that's not powerfulness that's forcefulness right we don't want to be forceful we want to be gentle with our power go ahead um, uh, I, I forgot what I was going to oh well so uh, yeah but just one more thing on that power up thing that's such a cool word right because so um by scott inviting me to do this it's kind of powering me up because now people are going to get to see my training and you guys got to see it. And before, maybe nobody was. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, oh, yes. Now we're back to with great power comes great responsibility and electricity <laughs> yes. bill too. Yes. I'm gonna well, this, is, this has definitely empowered uh, everyone, I think. This has been a power up for all of us. And uh, I mean, that's really what our kids is about. It's about how this, this reminds them how amazing they are, how resilient they are. And now uh, with critical thinking, they're able to discern uh, the right path to become a hero. So I mean, this is just like bang on, Sean, amazing. <laughs> yes, high five. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Your face here means you're a hero, I suppose. Yes, because you know what my big way of saying hero is? Guardians of the good life. That's why I think that everyone is on a journey to be a hero, because all it really means to be a hero is to be someone who cares about having a good day and tries to make it happen. And that the part that's heroic is that sometimes it's scary to do that, right? And sometimes it means you have to stay up late or you have to go to work even though you don't want to. Sometimes grownups are being heroes and they don't even realize it. You might see your parents working every day and they they don't feel like it but they don't give up and that's being that's being a hero because they're self-sacrificing their time so they can make money to give you food and clothes and stuff and pay for your rent um did somebody else want to say something uh, is that this is the end 
That's my last slide, guys. <laughs> okay. Well, here. Um. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I have a little power. It's a memory, Scott. I still remember the thing. I fought for Pius Dominican Republic because two Lego Lamborghini Lego Toad Scott Dog Phone Charger Chicken Chuck Palm Tree DJ Chisholm Chair uh, Cuba Banana Ruler Australia Jack nice. Apple Cork Table Minecraft Box Houdini Ribs Mars and Hexagon. Nice. Wow. <laughs> to give you to give you some context there, Sean, um, my friend Dave Farrow, who's the Guinness record holder for memory, he taught them a memory technique. And we've, uh, I think that was actually a list of 30 items that Ben still has. Uh, you can still recall the entire list in order. So just to give you some context there. That yeah, that's cool. Superpowers. Um, so I think we have a hand up at uh, Ethan and Ivana's house. Yeah. Uh just got to unmute. Uh, I, in the picture of like those, a bunch of heroes, I saw one of the people from the first, from the first nations. Oh yes. Yeah. I think it was uh, chief Joseph maybe, um, which was one of the heroic characters from the native American history. And uh, I also include pic even people like uh, Dr. Xavier, from the X-Men, he's someone who's in a wheelchair, but he's still being a hero every day. And even though he can't run around and jump over buildings, what can he do? He uses the power of his mind and he helps other heroes. He's also a hero support guy, which is what I think of myself as. Yeah. Um, every time someone's a hero like Batman, who does Batman have back in the, in the back cave waiting for him to help him out? Go ahead, Max. Robin. Well, Robin is Robin is his. You sidekick. mean Alfred? Yes, Alfred is Alf. Okay. Alfred is his hero support guy. That's what I am. Work, but he does good stuff. And, Alfred, uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I I just uh, didn't know if Justin had a question. Did you have a question, oh. Justin? No. Yeah, Alfred. Alfred helps to power him up. Um, so I like to say that every hero needs a hero support guy and by the way when i say guy i don't mean uh, a person with the body of a man i mean a guide to the ultimate you <laughs> so the hero support guy could be anyone and their job is to help the hero to, to power up and so they can complete their mission of creating a life that they value that, they, that with things that's important to them and that's good for them as a human being well, you've, you've certainly been that for all of us today. And I just want to thank you. If everyone can unmute your lines for a moment, let's give a round of applause for Sean, because that was an amazing...